Hey, this is Stuart Rev Donald. I'm out here at the Hog Wild Barbecue Championship in Mobile, Alabama, and I'm going to try and get a few tips from the pros. I'm going around. I'm trying to get tips from the pros for the backyard cook. You got one tip for me? Well, that's what I tell everybody. Cook every weekend, you'll get really good at this. <laughs> All right. You guys are from Huntsville, I see? Yes, you are. Okay, uh, one of the things I'm wanting to get are some tips from the professionals to help out the backyard barbecue if you got one or two things you want to throw at me. Uh, Stay sober. Stay sober. <laughs> yeah, don't let your buddies eat all the meat off your grill before it's time to turn it. <laughs> okay. And don't and let your neighbors see you drop the brisket. Don't let them see. The it's, you know what? <laughs> that fire's hot enough, it'll kill anything. Use plenty of lighter fluid. <laughs> lighter fluid. And barbecue sauce, especially. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you spill crown oil on the ribs, you'll take fifth place. <laughs> a little alcohol goes a long way. <laughs> Alright, thanks a lot folks and good luck in the competition. I know who you are. Here, no, go this. Alright. All right, I wouldn't even hug you at this point, okay honey? <laughs> okay. What I'm trying to Southern do is... Southern Tailgater. I know exactly what meetings that is. Excellent. Fabulous. And you are from... Barry, Ontario, Canada. I'm Diva Q. All right. What I'm trying to do is get a, a tip from the pros that will help the backyard barbecue improve the quality of their backyard barbecue. What category do you want? Take your pick. All right. Number one tip in ribs, pull your membrane. If you're making ribs, you need to pull the membrane so that the smoke can absorb and the rub can absorb into the meat. The other thing is, low and slow rules. That's all that matters. Okay? Take it easy with ribs. You can't break down that membrane. You, know, you cannot break down that internal fat fast need to take time to do it. Um, it is not something that should be done quickly. You need at least four hours for a slab of St. Louis spares. Um, and you know, trim them down yourself preferably, because then you can really get them to where you need them. All right, this is the uh, Shed Barbecue, and right now they're getting ready to uh, turn in uh, ribs, which will be a uh, turn in, I believe it's at noon. And uh, so the Shed is, uh, is, is home based in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Uh, there are six sheds. There is a shed here in Mobile, Alabama. And uh, basically they're owned by my son, Brad, which is back there plating up. You can see now blonde here, and my daughter, Brooke. And uh, anyway, uh, we're in, uh, like I said, there's six sheds. Uh, We've been to this competition, I think, six years, seven years. Uh, this particular sauce actually we won first place here about three years ago. Right. I can't remember, three or four years ago. Anyway, uh, we look, just like to have fun and uh, we like to enjoy people. And we have lots of friends out here, that uh, fellow competitors that, that we've known, uh, that met over the years. And uh, we think we have pretty good barbecue, but we never say we have the best. We just think there's a lot of people that got really good barbecue. We just think ours hangs right in there. Also, don't use enhanced ribs. You know what? The salt solution can really affect the ratio of rub that you need to use on your ribs. You know, if you use a 14% enhanced rib and then you put on a heavy salt rub, you're going to end up with a really hammy tasting uh, rib. You're not going to get a real true pork rib. At that point, you're with all that with all that salt going on, you're actually almost curing it. So take it easy. Don't use enhanced ribs. Tell me about your product. Alright, I have an original barbecue sauce here, and I have a pineapple brown sugar. I think that's what I just tried. That was, yep. uh, I immediately tasted the fruit in it. It was very nice. Right. Yep, and then the original is a little thinner by design. It's a little sweet. It's got a little uh, cayenne in it. I'm Bubba Latimer. Our team name is Bubba Q. Alright, and what I'm looking for are some tips from the pros that will help the backyard barbecuer do a little better job. I think that the best form of advice that anybody could give is keep things simple. You know, we, we try a lot of fancy things and over-the-top things. Uh, ultimately, it is barbecue. And just really, really keep things simple. Uh, you know, you just you, you don't have to get real fancy with it. We're not white linen and a tablecloth out here, you know. Um, you know, and that's that's really my, my philosophy that, that I run by.
Uh, have you had anybody that showed up after the deadline yet? Uh, we have not actually been good. This is the second turn in so far. Everyone's actually been early. Okay. And I'm just walking around trying to get some tips from the pros to give to the amateur that wants to cook in the backyard. Oh, wants to cook in the back, get good meat. Yeah. Good meat's getting harder and harder to find. You to just tell me about your sauce. All right. Well, we've got a regular or sugar-free sauce, and we've got them in a mild, warm, or hot. I've got uh, the first place, the one first place a couple years ago in the Georgia State Championship, in Cartersville, Georgia, in the backyard division. And um, I've got a jalapeno sauce, which is a really flavorful hot sauce. And I've got uh, a couple of dry rubs, a uh, regular and one like a uh, southwestern type of uh, The backyard barbecue. Well, uh, let it rest. Once you get done cooking, pull it off and let it rest a good 5, 10, maybe 15 minutes before you start to cut it. Let the juices redistribute. All right. Otherwise, know the equipment you use. That's the important part. Are you familiar with your grill, your smoker, whatever? You got All right. Set. You want a rim? Uh, of course. <laughs> Um, have a lot of fun with it. Number one, practice. Practice your ass off. Um, our, our sauce is a, a southern barbecue sauce. It's We've got extremely spicy to our mild sweet no heat sauces something that uh, it's just a flavor we like in the south. This thing out there with the, with the information world we have right now, a cooker's foolish not to utilize the cookbooks, the internet, the cook classes you can go to now. It just shortens your learning curve so much. And, you know, you can either pay it on the front end or you can suffer maybe for years before you learn how to really cook good barbecue. You know, and, and it ain't nothing about pride. You know, back when I started, there wasn't cookbooks. There wasn't cooking classes. It's just trial and error, and that caused a lot of pain, suffering, and blood, sweat, and tears. You know, and to save yourself all that, I'd suggest getting the cookbooks, getting the Internet, picking in. you got to wade through it, you know, all stuff isn't good. But wait through and get out the good stuff and go to a good class.